Hey everybody, greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is another beautiful uh, Sunday here at Miracle Life Family Church, and we're so glad that you could connect wherever you are watching from. Uh, we know that this is not a live service, but it is so good that you could connect like this. And as our tradition, and if you know the drill, please share, like, subscribe to the Miracle Life Family Church channel here on YouTube. And please, if you want to know more about Miracle Life Family Church, please click the link in the bio of whichever media platform that you're using, whether it's Facebook or YouTube. But we're so glad that you could join and listen in. Just worship with us. And, you know, uh, we also want to invite you to our in-person services. If you're in Osaka, please come through to uh, Roma here uh, along Zambezi Road here at Miracle Life Family Church. We would like to see you. And I always say that it's a whole lot better in person right here. So please, if you are joining us for the first time, indicate in the, in the comment section of whichever media platform that you're viewing from, uh, indicate that you are a first time visitor and somebody is eagerly waiting to connect with you, to give you more information. And we just wanna know that you're out there. It delights us so much to know that people are connecting from all over the world. So please enjoy the service, enjoy every bit of it, but more, more than that, please participate in the worship and just lean in and let God reach you. And we pray that God's richest blessings will flow your way today in Jesus' name.
Lord for His goodness and His greatness. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mwari wakanaka. Mwari wakanaka. Oh, yeah. Jesus is good to me. Oh, yeah. Jesus is good to me. Oh, yeah. 
take all the credit for what you're about you never to see me, Lord. You never cease to amaze us. All of the praises, Lord, they belong to you, Jesus. Jesus, you see. I will live to song and 
up our hands and give God the praise. Hallelujah. We lift our hands to you, God. It's an expression of our reverence, God. Our trust in you. Our love for you. Our total dependence on you, God. You are God above all. We worship you, God, in this place. You are worthy of the highest praise. And we sing our songs of praise to you, Jesus. These lives are yours, God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's your breath. It's your breath. It's God. In our lungs. So we pour out our praise. It's yours and yours alone. Yes, God. Yes, God. In our lives, Lord. So we pour out our praise to you only. To you only. To you only. Yes, God. You and you alone, Jesus. To you only. We worship you. We give you all the glory, Jesus. God is your breath in our lungs. And we appreciate you. Oh, how we love you. How we honor you, God. Thank you, God, for your love for us. Thank you for your presence in this place. Oh, hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. Somebody just give some praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. We honor you today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a good time to greet your neighbor. Let them know you are happy to be seated next to them. Smile. Let it show that you are happy. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you may be seated. Well, if you are here for the very first time, it's your first time at Miracle Life Family Church, we want to give you an MLFC welcome. Just wave your hand wherever you're seated. Anybody? I see that hand. I see that hand. Hallelujah. I see those hands over there. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Oh, yes. You are very welcome to Miracle Life Family Church. And if you haven't made a stop um, at the welcome center, Please do so at the end of the service. It's the, the glassy room to the left as you exit. The doors at the back, uh, there's a pop-up banner that says, First time guests, please be sure to make your stop there. And uh, we just want to connect with you a little bit and to let you know a little bit more about Miracle Life. And we are so glad that you came to spend this Sunday here at Miracle Life. Amen. Amen. I now invite your attention to the screens for uh, the video announcements. Beautiful morning, Miracle Life Family Church. These are your announcements for this week. The next child dedication will take place on Sunday, 21st May. Please note that parents wishing to dedicate their children are required to go through a once-off pre-child dedication parents class on Saturday, 13th May, from 9 hours to 11 hours. Sign up via our website or the mobile app by Wednesday, 10th May. Join School for Life for the Character of God class on Saturday, 6th May, from 9 hours to 12 hours in Classroom 3. This course outlines the nature of God and also shows how we can live in a relationship with Him. 
sign up at the table outside the foyer or via our website or the mobile app. We will be hosting a men's work day on Saturday, 20th May, from 8 hours to 13 hours as we come together to serve our church. This work day is a great opportunity for us to bond in fellowship and put our skills and talents to good use. Whether you're skilled with tools or just eager to lend a hand, we invite all men, young and old, to join us in this meaningful service opportunity. Please bring your own tools, which could include slashes, shovels, wheelbarrows, hedge cutters, rakes, and many other similar tools. For more information about what's happening at Miracle Life Family Church, be sure to refer to the bulletin tab on our mobile app, visit our website, and follow us on social media. Enjoy the service. Amen. We have come to the time of giving, and ushers are in the aisles to assist you. If you want to designate, designate your giving, just wave your hand, just lift up your hand. They'll be happy to assist you. Um, I would like us to read the Romans chapter 10, verse 13. Before we do, I just want to remind you that there are several options, giving options, mobile uh, uh, options and also internet uh, transactions and also at the back in the, in the foyer area there is a kiosk where you can also give and also a safe deposit box and we will be glad if you could just make use of one of those options Romans thir uh, 10 verse 13 it reads for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? So last week, uh, Christ for All Nations started their crusades uh, in started in other areas of Lusaka, but they will be coming here um, in our area in Ngombe for a five-day uh, crusade time. And it is going to be great. And I'm sure glad that we are a part of that. The Bible says that whenever a soul is one, whenever one person repents, heaven rejoices. I can only imagine how many people are going to have access to the gospel because of that crusade. And your giving is a huge part of that. So we are so glad. We celebrate, you know, God's grace that is going to be uh, all over this place, this area, because of that crusade that we have made possible with our giving because we have sent someone to go and preach the gospel through our giving. Amen. Amen. It is a beautiful thing. We are participants in the things that God is accomplishing in these last days. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. So I want us to pray for the offering. Amen. Father, thank you so much that you have chosen to include us in the purposes that you are accomplishing in this world, God. We are a part of what you are doing in these last days. Someone will come to faith in Christ and be on their way to heaven because of the gospel that will be preached. And we are so delighted that you have included us to participate, God, through our giving and also in other ways, God. And all those that have signed up and all those that are serving in other ways, God, we thank you that you have included us, O oh God Almighty. We thank you so much, God. May you bless the giving of your people. And may praise come to you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, my 
job when you sing a cc wine and songs you better bring your a game so thank you God. that was wonderful we're going to continue to look at family matters today and we're going to look at parents and children and so but before we do this is very consistent with family stuff but just want to talk to you uh, parents about helping keep miracle life up a safe place for your kids so when you, when you drop off your kids to M Kids in the morning, we, will, we do uh, a lot to keep them safe and to keep them um, looked after and nobody's going to go missing and obviously to fill them full of God's word and his spirit. But once they leave M Kids, they're now in your custody. And so what we would ask you, please, is to have them near you, have them in your proximity. This is a really big plot of land, all right, and we regularly kill venomous snakes on it. So if your kids are wandering around, it it is not, there are certain places that aren't safe. If your kids are running up and down steps or or using the parking lot as a a place to do races and things like that, it's, it's not safe at all. So please keep them because once, once they're done with them kids and they're with you, they're no longer our responsibility. So there aren't ushers looking after them, there aren't MKIDS workers looking after them, there aren't security guards looking after them, all right? So they need to be in your custody. So please do that, all right? And just keep them near you or uh, make sure if, if, if they're gonna be you know, getting something at the tuck shop, you know where they are, all right? So that's for, that's for your kids, it's for your family. And then also for those of us who are driving, Please adhere to the, the 10K an hour, 10K per kilometer uh, speed limit. That's all 10 kilometers per hour. There we go. Okay. <laughs> 10 kilometers per hour uh, speed limit. That means very, very slow. All right? Very slow. Just uh, also to keep things safe. And there are people going to their cars as well. All right? So please be aware of that. Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, Family Matters, and today we're going to look at a section that God tells us for parents and for children, and it's actually going to be children and parents, our responsibility in the Lord and under the Lord. So let's go back to the beginning again when God created this wonderful institution of our natural families. Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Then the Lord said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now, out of the ground, the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. That was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs. Everybody say one. And closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. So Adam and Eve were given responsibility under God to cultivate and to make the earth that God made flourish. It wasn't going to happen without them. It was always part of God's plan was for mankind to have responsibility on this incredibly big earth to cause the earth to flourish and then to reproduce and have children after them to to populate the earth, but not just to have kids, but to have kids that would serve under God and serve this responsibility under him. This was Genesis 2, and we know that it didn't stay this way. Sin entered the human condition. And Adam and Eve began to blame and to argue, but the first sin that we see is after them is a family sin, Cain and Abel. And so the first murder of the Bible was done by family members sin against each other and jealousy and strife that that led to this. And so you could say that Adam and Eve's sin, it affected their kids. It affected their kids horribly. And sin continues to affect our kids. Sin continues to be spread in families. And so there was family murder and Sadly, it, it still happens today. When those of us that are, are involved with other people's lives and maybe you're a connection group leader or you lead a Changes the Heal or, or something like that and we begin to hear people's stories of hurt and harm that has happened in their life, especially in our childhood, our teen years, so much of the hurt and harm or neglect or abuse It happens through family members. It happens through family members. So much of of sexual abuse is is not a stranger. It's a family member. And so sin in the family affecting the family and affecting kids is still with us today. And so we can't go back to, we don't go back to Genesis 2, but what you and I have We live after Calvary. There's a new covenant that has come into place because of the work of Jesus Christ. And the prophet said that God would remove our stony heart and he'd give us a heart of flesh. He would take the laws that were written on on tablets and he would write those laws upon our heart. And so because of the new creation, families can be different today. And the way we raise our kids and the way, if, if you are someone who's still in, in, your, in, the, in your family's home, the way you relate to your parents is different today. So let's look at this. It's described always in the New Testament. To the, Paul's strategy was always to tell us what Jesus did for us, who we are, and then he would take the, the second part of his epistles and he would say, here's how that looks. Here's how you live that out. And he commonly would say, here's how that looks in a family. All right, so go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. So because we are born again, because we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, the son, into the kingdom of the, the son of his love, we are different it means our families can be different. They, we, we don't have to be like the housewives of Johannesburg <laughs> or Dubai or Durban or... I, I can't watch that show for more than two minutes. It's so disturbing. All right. Oh, crazy. Makes me love my wife more when I've got one of the godly housewives of Lusaka. Amen. Um. Ephesians 4, 17, with the Lord's authority, I say this, 
Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Tell your neighbor, it's different. Tell your other neighbor, it's different at my house. Okay, families that are self-centered, families that there, there is not love and kindness and honor, our families are to be different, marketably different. That's not what you learned about Christ. Verse 21, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Notice Paul doesn't say, oh, well, you know, husbands and wives, you're only human. No, 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 that is not the gospel. We're not only human anymore. We've been infused and empowered with the life of God. And, and we now not only have a call for righteousness and holiness, we've been equipped with his nature. So our lifestyle, including our family life, should be radically, radically different from those who don't follow Jesus. Radically different. So we throw off old ways and we, we don't harden our hearts against him. So... What we hear today about parents and kids, I, I want to warn you that whenever we, whenever we hear God's admonition and we reject it, that process is what hardens your heart. That in and of itself. So soften your heart today. And if there's anything, and, and, and maybe there's going to be a lot of things today, and you, it's going to be encouragement, it's going to galvanize what you already believe, but if there's something that might confront you today, just say, Father, I accept your word. I repent. I go another way. Don't harden your heart. Amen? All right. So that was Ephesians 4. Let's fast forward to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 5 was talking about husbands and wife. wives. Thank you, Pastor Moffat, for exhorting us and helping us to see what marriages can be in the Lord last week. But how I many you know that's not, that's not the only thing about a family? There's, there's the way we relate to our kids and the way our kids relate to their parents. Ephesians 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. So Paul is quoting from the Old Covenant about honoring your parents and the, and the blessing of long life that comes with that. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So we see with parents and kids, we see this instruction going both ways, don't we? So kids, how you how you treat your parents, what, what is your responsibility towards them, and then it says, fathers, you have a responsibility towards your kids, all right? So let's go in the order that we have it here, and that is, children, obey your parents in the Lord. New Living Translation says, obey your parents because you belong to them. Adults who have not learned submission and authority at home while they were children are going to have a very difficult time being adults. Because for the rest of your life as an adult, you don't get to pick the speed limit. You don't get to pick how much tax you pay. You don't get to pick the rules at your company. 
Some, um, an authority figure does that for you. And if you were a rebellious child, you will be a rebellious adult. Or you'll end up in jail. Or you'll end up shattering your life and the lives of others. Or having a lot of difficulty because this, this world that we live in is, is a world of order. Okay? It's supposed to be. All right? So, the, the idea of children... And, and let's, this is, let's just define that biblically real quickly. Children obey your parents. So that means children are in the home of their parents, under the authority of their parents, right? So you're, you're living there, you're under their authority. Now, we already saw in Genesis 2, for this reason, for the reason of, of marriage, you shall what your parents? Leave your parents Leave them, spirit, soul, and body. You leave their authority. You leave the authority of your parents when you get married. You're looking at me confused, some of you. um, (laughs) Right? This isn't for marriage today, but that will affect your marriage, is that you leave. You leave. They do not have authority over you. They don't. All right? There's a a new loyalty that is stronger now, and it's called one flesh. Okay? And if you haven't left the authority of your parents, you will have .50 one flesh. It won't be one flesh. It'll be a fraction of flesh. All right, and you will have a you will have a very troubled marriage, okay, and maybe maybe you do. All right, um, so children, you're in the home, you obey you obey your parents, okay. So it's interesting that in Romans one, in Second Timothy three, both of them written by Paul, when Paul is talking about society and how bad it is getting and how low we have sunk. In both of those cases, he uses a phrase that children are disobedient to parents. Meaning, even in our natural law, how many of you know Buddhists and Muslims and atheists in their homes, they still believe that children should obey? All right, so there's a, there's a natural law and a natural order that has now slipped so far away that children don't obey their parents in the home, all right? So uh, if, if you are in your parents' home, um, I, I really want you to perk up today, all right? Now, if you're 37 years old and you're in your parents' home, please grow up and leave tomorrow, okay? Please, I'm, I, I'm, leave tomorrow, just go. Anywhere, anywhere, just go. Okay? And if, and if you didn't buy the mattress, don't take it with you. Just, just go. All right? I'm serious. All right? Hallelujah. All right. So, so th- this honoring and, 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 and obeying is, is so important. Now, in the Old Testament, there were... Don't quote me on this, but I think there were six. Um, there, there were six things that were so abominable to God that, that, that don't don't bring a sacrifice to the temple. We're just going to kill you. All right, we're going to stone you. You know what? One of one of them was disobedient to parents. All right, there was no rehab. Okay, we have to remove that from the community. We've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to excise that sin in the body of the sinner, okay? Now, we're not under the old covenant, but that shows the severity of how God feels about that, that of how harmful and how wrong it is. Now, it is interesting here that in Ephesians 6, Paul doesn't use the threat of death for kids to obey their parents. He says... 
that it will be well with you, that you'll live long on this earth, that it pleases the Lord. All right, so we have a, we have a higher motivation just other than I don't wanna be killed, okay? Now, some of you grew up in a home that if you didn't obey your parents, forget about the counsel, all right? Your, your parents were gonna kill you, all right? Um, there was discipline and there, there were consequences in life. Uh, boy, Lord knows I experienced some of those, all right? It says that it, it drives foolishness from you, the discipline of parents, all right? I had, I had a lot to drive out of me, okay? So, let's add... Are, would there be any exceptions to obey your parents? Yes, there would be. And because it says, it says in the Lord or because of the Lord. So this is, this is under the Lord's authority. So if, if your parents say you, you're not allowed to go to church, find a way to go to church. Okay. If your parents say you must marry this unbeliever, don't disobey them okay because you're under the lordship of jesus so what the new testament teaches about civil disobedience with government is we obey the government unless obeying the government would cause us to disobey the bible all right in our day and age that that is not necessarily frequent in, in the nation of Zambia, in most homes, but there, there could be homes where that's the case, all right? And perhaps you're a child where one of your mom or your dad is, is not a follower of Jesus, and so you honor them and you, you obey them, but you also read your Bible, all right? Now, maybe you have to sneak at night, and you get your cell phone flashlight, and, and you read the Bible, but you read the Bible, and you pray, Remember, Daniel was told he shouldn't pray by someone in authority. What did he do? He prayed anyway, and the Lord, and the Lord looked after him. All right? So we obey parents while we're under their authority. Let me read this from a wonderful um, Anglican theologian, John Stott. He said, and he's talking about how, how the family is is recreated in Jesus. For family life, which God created at the beginning and pronounced to be good, was spoiled by human rebellion and selfishness. Relationships fell apart. Society was fractured. Love was twisted into lust and authority into oppression. But now, in the Lord. Remember, that's the phrase there in Ephesians 6, in the Lord. But now in the Lord, by his reconciling work, God's new society has begun. Continuous with the old, in fact, of family life, but discontinuous in its quality. For now, all our relationships are transformed precisely because they are in the Lord. They are purged of ruinous self-centeredness and suffused instead with Christ's love and peace. Even obedience to parents is changed. It's no longer a grudging acquiescence to parental authority. Christian children learn to obey with gladness, for this pleases the Lord. Isn't that awesome? So, children obey. Now, Quoting from the Old Testament, it says, honor your father and mother. So there is obedience while we are in their home, and there is honor until our parents die. We honor, and, and, but please understand, obey and honor are two different words with two different applications, okay? So we honor our father and mother. Now, one of the things about honor is we, it means that we ascribe it value. It's important. We honor, uh, a, a, so a guest of honor at a wedding reception doesn't sit at table 25. 
Table 25, you know, and I know, there's no meat for you, okay? <laughs> it's going to be rice and vegetables, and I, praise the Lord, I didn't pay for it anyway, okay? Amen? Guest of honor, we ascribe value, whatever you honor, you get, you're showing its value, you treat it differently. You treat them differently, all right? So we honor our parents because they are our parents. And it means that we, the way, the way in which we speak to them, the way in which we treat them, the way that we see them. Now, what if they were bad? What if they've never said sorry? What if there was harm? Th those are all real, and, and, I, and I pray that there could be reconciliation around some of those things, but sometimes there are, are sinful parents that don't seek that, but it doesn't mean we don't honor them, all right, in the way that we think about them, the way that we treat them. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5, and it was talking about, he was giving instruction to Timothy about widows in the church, and he said who were true widows, meaning they didn't have family to look after them, they were prayerful, they were godly, um, and they were old, okay? And, but in this, it, it, Paul reminds, this is not new teaching, but it reminds families and children of, of responsibility. First Timothy 5, 3, take care of any widow who has no one else to take care for her. Now, let's just pause here. The implication is, and it's consistent with that passage, is if her husband is alive, he should be looking after her. So moms and dads, husbands and wives, you need to plan your life and plan your finances so that you can look after each other till you die. All right? Don't, don't send your kid to law school as a pension for yourself. Okay, maybe they don't want to go to law school. Maybe they want to be a lawyer that doesn't make a whole lot of money. All right, so, so we need to plan. We need to live responsibly, all right? But in, in such a case, there's a widow who has no one else to look after her. Um, but it says, verse four, but if she has children or grandchildren, their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases God. This pleases God. Now, you may say, well, okay, my, my parents are, they're, they're able to look after themselves or they're okay, but, but it means that you're still looking after them, looking after them. Uh, must have been five, six years ago. So my, my in-laws, my wife's parents, were moving 2,000 kilometers away to be closer to family, but packing up their house at age 73 and 75 was not going to be an easy job. So Pastor Haley got on a plane and spent two weeks at her parents' house and packed up their entire house by herself. Well, and she would, she would force them, you know. You, you've never seen her in work mode till she's packing up a house. I mean, woo, I tell you. And I, I was doing my master, so I helped a little bit, but she was just from flat out, morning till night. What do we need to give away? What do we need to throw away? What are we bringing with us? Everything marked and everything. What, it, what is that? That's honoring your parents. That's looking after them because it was going to be really, really hard for them to do on their own, all right? Um, my, my brother and I, with my mom and her medical situation, different thing, we look after her. We look after her. We have a responsibility. Does it mean everything is perfect? No. But why, why do we do this? This pleases the Lord. This pleases the Lord, Okay, you make sure that they are okay. Now, I want to just 
I want you to hear this because this is really important. But what the Bible teaches when we, when we give grace and we show benevolence and we give love, that is determined, what we give is determined by the giver, not by the recipient. Okay? So, this, this doesn't mean that you are your parents' ATM machine. You have left them, you formed a unit with your wife, you have a family, and you, you make sure they're okay. And if they're okay, then it's okay. All right? And I don't want to get too personal here, but they're, they're just some interesting, sometimes unreasonable demands that are not about are they looked after, okay? Yeah, I, you know, there's a story I'm aware of where the, 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 the mom without a, someone to look after her demanded a 20,000 kwacha dress for a, for a function, all right? Where do you go in Lusaka for a 20,000 kwacha dress? I don't want to know. I don't even want to know, all right? Okay. Is it okay to say no? It's okay to say no. That's okay to say no, all right? You, you are not in whatever guilt trip or emotional, uh, whatever thing they put on you, all right? That's not okay. How many of you know manipulation is never okay? Okay. So we, second Corinthians 9 tells us we do not give in response to pressure. We give in response to grace from our heart. Okay, so there is always, with every biblical truth, there is always a ditch on the left and a ditch on the right. Okay, so the ditch on one side is to neglect and to not care, and I'm on my own, and I don't care about them. They hurt me. Mm -mm, that's wrong. That's unbiblical. Okay, but for them to suck you dry of every last quacha, that is not biblical either. All right? Figure it out in your home, okay? So, verse 4. So, children in the home, parents while they're alive. And then in verse 4, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So there is a who, there is a what not to do, and a what to do, all right? So first of all, let's look at the who. Fathers. Hmm. Fathers. Who's missing? Mothers. Okay. Is that a mistake? It's not a mistake. It is the father's responsibility to raise children. The Bible says it is the father's responsibility to raise children. Okay? Well, Pastor, but that's not how we do it. Well, then how you do it is unbiblical. The Bible says. Remember I warned you in the beginning, don't harden your heart. Here's, the, here's an opportunity. Okay, here's the opportunity right here. Okay. So in the, in the Old Testament, God said, I chose Abraham that he would raise up his children after him to follow in my ways. I chose Abraham. Wait, 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 didn't Abraham have a wife? Sure. Was she a part of it? Absolutely. Whose responsibility is it? Abraham, the father. Was, did Eve sin in the garden? Was she deceived? Who did, who did God call out to? Adam. Adam. Adam, where's your family? Adam, what's going on here? Adam, I gave you responsibility. 
the world that we live in today is like a raging tsunami flood flowing against male responsibility. In every nation of the world, in every movie, in every song, in every interaction, are men living without responsibility. And it is so far from God's plan and from his order. Amen. Fathers, your responsibility towards your children is more than providing a sperm and school fees. Okay? It's far more under God than that. So, so let's, let's think about this. So, one thing we need to think about this is there is a real deal in our world today, and it's in our society, and it's in our families. It was in my family. And that is what the Bible calls fatherlessness, where a father is gone. And so a father can be gone because of death. A father could be gone because of a divorce. And so the father is not in the home. Here's what I know and here's what I see from God's word. There is grace. There is help. Okay. But the other thing about that, folks, what that means is don't ever do fatherlessness on purpose. Well, you know, I got this really good job in Australia. You know, I'll be gone from the family for two years. They can't pay you enough to disobey God. They can't pay you enough to be irresponsible towards your children for two years. Mm -mm. You're far better off living in a flat, eating roller meal for two years than taking that job in Australia. Yeah, but, but they're going to provide for my masters. Take your family with you. Oh, but they can't. Oh, yes, they can. They can just get on the plane with you. <laughs> yes, they can. We've got a family in this church, a young couple. I, was, I remember I was a part of their life um, when, when, they were, when they were just still courting. They were at Unza. And, and they're, they're just getting more and more education. And I think she got accepted into a PhD program in the UK. What did he do? He went with her. And the kids. And then they seem to be smiling, enjoying life. Amen. Don't do fatherlessness on purpose, fathers. Moms. Well, I'm getting old. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to have a kid. I can't find a man, so I'll just go ahead and get pregnant because I really want to have a child. No, that's against God's order. If you're lonely, get a dog. Okay? Don't, don't have a child without a, without a father in the home on purpose. Are you crazy? Don't do it on purpose. Now, if it has happened through circumstance, if it happened through sin, if it happened through a mistake, there's grace for you. Do not do it on purpose. Do not do it on purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, how do we live this out? There's another way that if in our, in our communities, in our connection groups, in our, in our families, but in the family of God, if there's not a dad around, men, men in this room, fill in the gap. Fill in the gap. When my dad left, there was a guy in our church, he would just take my brother and I fishing. And we'd, we'd chop up chicken livers and, and just go fishing with him. A, a, a boy needs to be with a man and a godly man, an example of a man. My mom didn't teach me how to cut up chicken livers and go fishing. It's not her job. There's things that a man needs to do. And so it could be a, 
in your family where you're an uncle, where you're a sibling, okay? But it also could be in the family of God. And there was, there was another man that just took me and adop- almost adopted me. And every weekend I was at his house. We didn't do Bible studies. I just watched how he treated his wife. I watched how he treated his kids. He made a difference in my life when my dad was gone. He was an, el- an elder in our church. So, fathers, fathers, do your job. Fathers, do your job. Live at home. After work, men, go home for God's sake. Go home. <laughs> By the mercies of God, go home. Physically, get in your car and go home. It's not time to hang out with the boys. Paul said this, when I became a man, I put away childish things. And if you're at the pub or at the sports hall, whatever you're doing for three, four nights a week, apart from your family, apart from your kids, grow up, stop it. Stop it in Jesus' name. Go home. Go home in Jesus' name. Raise your children. Raise your children. Men, come to Brave. Bring 10 of your nephews with you. Don't ask them. Don't invite them. Just grab them. Put them in your car. Hire a rental. Just just get them here. Okay? Join a men's group. Read men's book. Don't Wait for a woman to do your job. Fathers, fathers, bring up your children. Fathers, bring up your children. Now, what do we know from Genesis? Fathers, will you need help? Do you need help? Yeah, you need help. Okay, but it is not the woman's job to raise children. She carries them for nine months. She feeds them from her own body. That's, that's pretty amazing. All right. You raise them together with the father taking the lead. Fathers, you have the captain's armband. You can't relinquish it. You can't take it off. Okay? Raise your children in the Lord. Grab your wife's hand and lead your children in God's ways. Let them see you pray. Let them see you bring them to church. Amen? Your role, your responsibility. Now, let's take a pause here. So, if you're a single lady and you want to get married, and you want to marry a guy who doesn't know the Lord or love the Lord, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind. You're nuts. You're you're biblically crazy. Because he will not do that. He will not do that at all. He won't. So just stop it. Stop it. Delete him from WhatsApp. Amen? Well, but Pastor, well, but Pastor, don't, 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 just stop it. Stop it. You're going against God's ways, and, and you're, going to reap, you're going to reap the consequences of it, okay? All right, so it says, fathers, first thing, don't provoke the kids to wrath, okay? What does this mean? You don't have a blank check to treat your kids anyway. Don't... Don't provoke them to anger by the way you treat them, meaning it's a possibility. So here are some ideas of how things that you can, that you can do that will provoke your kids to wrath. Number one, be hypocritical. Number two, be inconsistent. Number three, be harsh. Be impatient. Forget what it was like to be a 12-year-old. Discipline without relationship. That will provoke your kids to wrath. But what are we supposed to do? Bring them up in the training and the admonition 
of the Lord. Everybody say, of the Lord. Meaning that there is a source of information that is important. Now, I know in homes, and, and probably happened in, I hope it happened in your home and happened in mine, is we, you know, we tend to, we want to teach kids good manners. And how do you, how do you show respect to elders? And how do you handle money? And how, so there's, there's, there's manners that we have. And what, what do you call someone? I remember my dad uh, instilled in me, and I, I still do it, but if, if I'm in a room and there are, you know, there are six chairs and there are ten of us, and a man doesn't sit when a lady is standing. You get up and you offer your chair. And if she doesn't want it, you don't sit back in it. You don't, you don't sit when a lady is standing. Well, you say, I didn't learn that. That's, that's fine. It's not in the Bible. It's, but, but that's just that's what my dad instilled in me as far as just manners. Okay. So in, in one sense, some of these things are, are they're good in that and my dad taught when you shake a man's hand, firm grip, and you look him in the eyes. That's how you shake a man's hand. Okay? And I can tell there's some men who haven't, they didn't, their dads didn't teach them how to shake a man's hand. Okay? So th- those, are our, those are social ways that we can have expectations of one another. And they're good, aren't they? They're helpful. But we have to take all of those things through the filter of God's word. Because some of the ways our family do things, some of those things are against his word. I remember being around folks a number of years ago, and in a certain culture, when a, when a young man turns 21, his father plans what's called a bender. A bender. Meaning a drunken activity with other men to introduce him into drinking. And we're not talking about just like a, a beer or two. All right. With spirits and shots and, and so that so you get all the, the guys and so the older men teach this younger boy how to be an alcoholic. <laughs> and, they, and they introduce them into the world of irresponsible alcohol consumption. That's being a man. All right, so if that's in your culture, stop it. Stop it. Well, but you know, but pastor, that's, you know, that's how you be a man. No, it, the Bible says that's how to be a fool. <laughs> that's on the, that's on, in Proverbs, that's on the list of fool, fool characteristics. Okay? No, I'm not, I'm not going to teach my son how to drink. The world's trying to do that anyway. All right? I'm going to teach him how to stand up and be a man. A man for God. All right, so that there are certain things we have to we have to change, and and traditions that need to die with us. Amen. All right. Well, let's look at one more scripture here, because training, bringing them up, is it's so many different things. So one of them is yeah, bring them to church. All right. Well, I don't want to go to church. Well refer back to obey your parents and the Lord, okay? Uh, how many of you were raised in a home where going to church, it was not a discussionable topic, okay? <laughs> May those days return, <laughs> okay? It's not a discussionable topic, okay? But in Deuteronomy 6, and this was a really, really big exhortation for the people of God in this day that that continued. It says, verse four, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. It's lifestyle training. It's every moment is a teachable moment. Every situation. So, and and please note, parents, we don't get the admonition of the Lord from a book, like a 
book in the bookshop? I don't mind if you get a book from the bookshop. What you teach your kids comes from the word of God that you've hidden in your heart. Get this in your heart, moms and dads. Get this in your heart. And what will happen? Then it'll flow out of your heart to your kids. It'll flow out of your heart in every situation. When you read an article, when you hear something on the news, when there's a situation that happens at school, what comes out of your heart? God's perspective. God's ways. God's way of thinking. God's way of doing. God's way, when you, even when you talk, just when you're talking about life, it's infused with the Bible because it's in your heart. And so really, parents, one of, the, one of the greatest gifts you can give to your children is to know God's word deeply, deeply, deeply. And so there, there might be some moms and dads in here. You need to sign up for every School for Life class not because you really want to for yourself, but because you want to know God's word better for your kids. Maybe some of you want to do two years at Rhema. Well, but I'm not going to be a pastor. Yeah, but you're a dad. You're a dad, and I want to be able to teach my children. I want to be able to have the word of God more central in my view and my perspective. That's a good thing. That's a wonderful thing. Amen? Now... My wife and I, our kids are no longer under our roof, all right? And we don't make them go to church anymore. If they go to church, that's on them. And we can't bribe them or coerce them or, or anything. And it is scary. And it is, it's a, folks, it is a limited time. It's a limited time. It's a limited time. And... There, there aren't many things in life that I'd say, man, I would really like to go back and change. Or, or you know, would I take a different course in college? No, not really. I can figure out, I can get another course later. The, the thing that I would love to have another chance at is raising my kids. But guess what? I don't get another chance. It's done. Done and dusted. Finished. So if you have children in your home under your responsibility, sober up, sober up. Be there full time, all the time because there is a day where they're gone and when they're gone, they are gone. And the world that we live in is crazy and scary and I don't know if you read the news, it is getting worse every year. And we, we, we can't, have, there's no magic wand that is going to change our world. But what can we do? We can put the word of God into our, the hearts of our kids. And we can raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. Amen? Amen? Lord, help us. Help us, God. Help us in all the roles that we heard about today that we saw from your word. Children obey. Father, for us with parents to honor them to treat them well, to value them. Make sure they're okay, God. Maybe some here have given up. Maybe some have shirked that responsibility. Lord, and instead of not having some conversations, they've just, avo- they've just avoided God. And that's not, that's not your, your way. And God, for, for dads here, for moms, and Lord, your, your word, Lord, is pretty strong to us dads but father that means you believe in us that means it's possible father I pray for fellow fathers in this room regardless of where their kids are regardless of their what's been done in the past or not done in the past May every father in this room rise up. Lord, give us your courage and your boldness. Let us step into our responsibility. Lord, we need help. Lord, we need a strong marriage. We need 
we need a godly woman with us to do this. We can't, we can't do this on our own, God. Help us, God. Lord, for single moms, for folks that are divorced, for widows, widowers, God, where things have gone in a way that we wish they didn't, God, help us. Help us, God. You said in your word that you would be a father to the fatherless. And Lord, may that happen through us. May that happen in connection groups. May that happen at Merge. May that happen at Impact and M Kids. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I believe that there, are, with heads bowed, eyes closed, there, there are men in this place, and I, and I know some of you that you've, you've risen to this challenge, and you've raised your own kids, but you look out for other young men, and you look out, and you stand in the gap. Keep it up. Keep it up. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't stop. But there's some men here you need, you need to join M Kids. You need to be a teacher. You need to join Impact. There are fatherless kids that are waiting on your, dis, on your obedience. There are people who have called out to God for help that are waiting on your obedience. Just show up. Just show up and watch, and watch what God will do. Just show up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I just can't get away from this, Father. There are, there are fathers here, and maybe, maybe like me, you wish, you wish some things could have gone different, but can't go back, but what we can do is be different in the future. And the word of the Lord for some of you fathers in this place is, it's not too late. It's not too late to repent. It's not too late to pick up the phone. It's not too late to buy a plane ticket. get into your kids' lives. It's not too late to put down certain things and to rise up. Because what the Lord is saying, they're still watching you. They're still looking up to you. And you can set some things in motion with the help of God and the plan of God that will change your family from generations to come generations to come. Father, I pray for every dad in this building, God. Lord, it is, it is not an easy assignment, God. It is not an easy assignment, Lord. And there's so many different things and pulls and so many directions, God. Help us, Lord. Help us to honor you. Help us to do our part fully and well. In Jesus' name. Jesus name with every head bowed every eye closed if you're in this place and you say Pastor Walker I need to be saved I need to be born again I don't know Jesus but I want to I want to be in the family of God and the Bible makes it wonderfully clear that if you receive Jesus then God gives you the power to become one of his children adopted into the family Adopted. This whole family thing is his idea. And it starts with him as your father. Maybe you're here and you say, I'm a, I'm a runaway. I'm a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter. Come home today. Come home to a father who throws parties for dirty kids. He loves you. He's never stopped loving you. Come home to him. Let him fix your life. Let him make things right. 
you're here today, I want to be able to pray with you. If you need to be born again, if you need to come home to the Lord, you're here today. Would you simply raise up your hand real, real high and just say, that's me. That's me. I want to pray that prayer. I want to be part of God's family. Anyone at all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. He loves you. He cares for you. We bless you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else will say, that's me. I want to pray that prayer. I want to know God. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you there in the back. Yes, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Can we all stand to our feet? Let's all stand to our feet. Those of you that lifted up your hand and you say, that's me. Would you just grab your Bible, your belonging, whatever you came to church with, and just come and meet me up front. Just come and meet me up front. We're going to pray. God is going to do a marvelous, miraculous work in your life. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Masoni, just let's put him over there. Yeah. Thank you. Just come, come to, a, to a God who brings you into his family. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. There's a, a very clear teaching in the New Testament. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Very clear teaching in the New Testament, five different instances where believers who, like us, we know God, he's come to live in us, he's poured out his spirit to come and in, indwell us, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes upon you for works of service. The Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Bible shows that the initial evidence is being able to speak in an unknown prayer language that is wonderful and marvelous, where we get to pray beyond our understanding. And then God begins to use us to help other people in supernatural ways that we could never do. And I don't know about you, but there are times where I want to help people, but I'm limited by my own ability. With the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is supernatural power to help others. And so if you're in this place and you are born again, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you need this biblical Acts 2 experience in your life. It is for you. And God will, will freely, the Bible says all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is, is ask. Anybody here would say, that's me. I'm born again, but I've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I am a candidate, and I'd like to receive that New Testament experience today. Anybody here, just raise up your hand. You say, that's me. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. The evidence of speaking in tongues. All right. Well, may we all go home and like Paul say, I pray in tongues more than you all. May we exercise that and use that in a wonderful way. Those of you that have come forward, thank you so, so much for following Jesus today. And the Bible says that our help comes from heaven. So why don't we lift up one of our hands where God is and, and say this prayer with me. Say, God, I believe that you love me. You sent Jesus to die in my place. You raised him from the dead. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Cleanse me from every sin. I repent. And I turn to you and only you for the rest of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. So we want to give you a book We'd like to pray with you. If you would just follow us to a place of prayer, if you would just follow Ben there, God bless you. Did you come for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Wonderful, wonderful. All right. So we're going to just show you some things from God's word. We're going to pray with you, and you're just going to be gloriously, gloriously filled. If you would just turn, we're going to go to a place of prayer this way. Thank you. Just follow the Pastor Sammy there. Thank you so much. Isn't the Lord good? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to I wanna remind everybody in this place, what, whenever God in his word, when it seems like a challenge, when it seems like whew, there's a gap for me to rise up, guess what? There is always grace. 
There is always grace to rise it. You don't do it in your own strength. So if today was challenging, oh, so much more is the grace of God for us to grow to where he wants us to be. Amen? Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your help today. We love you. Father, as we go from this place, thank you that we bring a new creation into our families, into our marriages, into relating to our parents, relating to our kids, God. We are so thankful that we're not the same anymore. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. As we're dismissed, if you need prayer in any area of your life, sickness in your body, a family situation, our care team is up front. They would love to be able to minister to you and for you today. And so as we're dismissed, please come and, and let us minister to you. Amen. We're going to dismiss from the back to the front. Have an awesome, awesome day in Jesus. We love you so much.